Hi, welcome to another Journey with Jeff show. We have a, uh, as always, we have a very fascinating guest with us today. Uh, Jonathan Hunt was born in Hartford, uh, raised in Bloomfield, went to Bloomfield High. He was a track star and a cross country star there. He moved to Springfield with his uncle as a young man. And then he got into, after high school, he got into um, uh, con contracting, construction work. And then he found his way over to, to bodybuilding and physical training. And um, he became a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. And he continues in that profession uh, till today. And we thought we'd talk to him about his journey and what it's been like uh, to um, to be in, in Jonathan's shoes. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing, Jeff? Good, good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Uh, you, were, you were born in uh, Hartford. Yes. And But you went to Bloomfield, where'd you go, to Bloomfield High? Uh, yeah, elementary all the way up to um, high school, the latter part of high school. I, I moved to um, Springfield to live with my uncle and aunt. Um, and because uh, my mom thought there was some potential in me to um, as far as athletics, and he was a he was a uh, track coach, and um, he was the founder of United States Youth Games. It's a uh, it's uh, for the inner cities, like 13 cities. They come together on um, major university campuses and to compete yearly. And so um, and so I I became athletic as a result of living with him, and um, but I came back to graduate from Bloomfield High School. I see. Yeah. And what, what, uh, how old were you when you got, when you went from Hartford to Springfield? Um, I was about, say, 13. And you lived with your uncle? Yeah. And I, yeah, at yeah. that time, how do you, how do you remember feeling about that? Did you, I, 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 did you I, enjoy? I, I kind of didn't want to go, but my, my, my parents saw, you know, something I didn't see. You know, when you're young, you just have this, this narrow vision. Um, and um, I, I'm at the uh, in retrospect, I'm glad I went. Um, they were disciplinarians, and I, I kind of needed that. Um, and um, and also, um, you know, he's a track coach, and he saw the potential in me. And um, I had opportunity to go to um, a good, you know, um, high school there, classical high school. Now they're condominiums, and. Um, do you think that you're spending time with your uncle and him steering you into athletics? Do you think that prevented you from maybe going down the wrong road when you were a young kid? Uh, were there other temptations yeah. there? Oh, the absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I always hung out with older uh, guys um, because, you know, I was also always curious, you know. and. Um, and so, but my parents, you know, they, they, um, they saw the potential in me, and so they kind of like, okay, so you're gonna live with your uncle and aunt, and um, and yeah, so I got into athletics and and into my studies, and yeah, I um, I'm glad I. I they and you did. ran track. Yes. Cross country. Cross country. Yes. Uh, what event in track? Uh, the 800 meters. Yeah. And, and how did you fare? Pretty? Did you do? I, I did. I you know I held my own. You know. Yeah. yeah I, I I I did really good. I I excelled more so in cross country. Um, yeah. I found out I was a long distance runner. And um, and yeah. So uh, in my junior year, I was second on varsity. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, yeah. That that was uh, the training. People don't understand that um, when you're running. At that level, the the training is 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 kind of grueling, you know. Um, and our our coach would uh, also train with us because he was a rugby player, and so he would train with these high school students, and he would hold his own, like, you know. And so um, he wasn't the type that that you know, the do, do as I say type, he's do as I do, you know, and so that's, that's what caused me to excel even more. So I saw a living example of what um, dedication in that sport could, could so bring. So here was a person who's a, a role model 
in your life. Yes. As probably was your uncle and sure. and other coaches and teachers. Yes. Do you think that a person's life, uh, anybody's life, can be affected positively or negatively, for that matter, by mm -hmm. the role models that they have and the people that are in their lives? Absolutely. Guiding them and nurturing them. and Absolutely. Um, I, I believe that we're a product of what we see and what we hear. And so um, if you hear every day, you're going to be the best at whatever sport. You, you, you're going you're gonna to start to believe it. And then, and then people are going to be attracted into your life. It's, it's, it's not by um, tremendous effort, but by your belief system. And um, with, with me... Um, you know, my, my, um, my parents saw something in me that, that, um, was worth making that sacrifice because yeah, you know, at 13, you know, it's just like, you know, like I have, uh, um, I had back then five siblings and, and I had to leave them, you know, and it was kind of, you know, a little, um, it was, um, it was upsetting. But then, you know, six months, a year, and I started getting to the groove and, and, um, and I started excelling in, in athletics and, and um, my academics. And so it was, um, it was pretty awesome. So Bloomfield High School. Bloom, yeah. And you graduated. Like, yes. So what happened after, uh, after you got out of high school, you got into um, construction work, into um, other yeah, yeah, and so so I'm like, okay, so um, um, let's back up a little bit. At 11 years old, I had um, um, a paper route, okay, and so it was it was just, um, and you had to be 12 in order to to deliver the the Hartford Current, and so um, I convinced this this lady. I'm like, I can do it, I can do it now. Mind you, I'm like 130 pounds. Five seven, you know, um, and so I'm this skinny kid, and we're talking forty plus customers a day. Plus, if you know anything about the current, the Sunday paper is is three times as thick, right? <laughs> and so, 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 just imagine a skinny kid on a Sunday, stra strapped here with a bag full of papers here, strapped here, bag, and then my my dad bought me a three wheel um, bicycle. With a with a basket right in the middle, on the, on the back of the the two wheels, and um, that was full, and I had to go almost a mile to start the paper route, right, and so but um, yeah that was daunting to say the least, but um, you know when collections comes around, okay I was collecting forty to fifty dollars a week, being eleven years old, you know back then that was that was good money. And so, um, so I always was um, not so much money motivated. I knew that you know I wanted certain things, and you had to to have money as a medium of exchange. And so, um, I always had a job in that regard. So, um, after after high school, I, I I did not it did not gel with me to 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 have to mortgage my future in regards to um, paying for an education that was iffy. So I just dove into the to um to the construction industry and they were it was it was good money you know and it kept me it kept me active okay and so um and so in that regard and so I did that for x amount of years and um and I got into the training aspect of my life um well you know with my uncle but um but I came back I started going to the gym OK. And so there were people, you know, coming to me, asking me questions about nutrition and and training because I I appeared to, you know, look like I knew what I was doing. Why is that? And Had so you gotten into bodybuilding by that time. Um, I, I was I was I was thinking about that, you know, but one hundred and thirty pounds, you want to put some muscle on. Right. By then I was about one hundred thirty seven. And um, so I started lifting and I started eating right. And um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was one of my, one of my idols, mentors types, okay. And so, um, so I get these muscle magazines and, um, and start eating, you know, the brown rice, the steamed chicken and stuff like that. And my body started to metamorphosize into 
um, what I desired. And, um, and people started asking me questions. And on occasion, the owners of uh, Gold's Gems back then, which is now Club Fitness, they would ask me, you know, yeah, why don't you get your certification and, and, and um, train it out of our gyms? Because they were, you know, noticing people coming to me and, and, you know, I have a passion for people. You know, I just, I'm just a people person. And one thing led to another. So I got my certification and, um, and I never looked back. You know, along with um, about 15, 15 years of competing, yeah. And so, so you kind of combine your athleticism with your people skills, mm -hmm. you know, and you you uh, parlayed it into a career. Um, but you but you just mentioned you got into uh, you actually got to the point where you became a competitor. Yes. In, in contests. Yes. Tell us about that. What? what, what uh... Well, um, well, you know, in, in every gym, every sizable gym, there's always some competitor. These are um, bodybuilding, figure, fitness, um, marathons, um, you know. And so there's always athletes, um, competitive athletes in every um, sizable gym facility. And so um, with that being the case, um, you know, these guys that were competing on occasion of like, you know, they would see my physique and they would say, yo, you, you know, you should consider competing. And so, so one day I just had an epiphany. I'm like, wow, I can do this. And there's this guy named Norman Gibson, you know, um, God rest his soul. Um, he was a big part of me getting into the competition arena. Um, this man, he was, um, he worked in Manchester, um, at the Public Works, and um, he competed an X amount of years, um, like 20 years he would compete, and um, he, was, he was like the gym mentor, in a sense, you know, older gentleman, and he told me I had what it took, and so, so he gave me this confidence that I needed, and so he helped me, you know, prep for my first show, and we did it, and so my first show, I came in last, right? Some people would say sixth place, right, which there's only six competitors. <laughs> but I came in last, humbly so, right, because, um, because everyone who beat me becomes my teachers, right? And so um, with that being said, my second show, I, I came in second, and I started winning. So you actually you compiled some uh, awards and... Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had... I, I got some competitive I got, success. I got at least 30-plus trophies and you know, accolades, um, but yeah, and so. Well, so now you work with, you have clients, mm -hmm. and where, where your clients, where, you, where do you, where you work out of cl uh, Club Fitness, did you say? Club Fitness in Bloomfield, in Bloomfield. formerly um, Goals Gym, okay, so, um, and then uh, there's also Club Fitness in Enfield on Route 5 that I work out of. In. And, and what kind of... Uh, what, so your clients come to you mm -hmm. at Club Fitness, mm -hmm. and, and and what kind of services? What do you, what do you, first of all, what kind of clients come to you? Are they are some of them just run of the mill, your everyday workers? Are do you have any um, athletes? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, what kind of clients do you have, and what are the, some of the various um, techniques or uh, approaches that you employ? with your uh, clients? Okay, so my, my clients vary from swimmers to football players, um, uh, track athletes, um, basketball players, um, and the, the regular person that just wants to be healthy. Um, yeah, and so I've been known to train, you know, mother, father, children, you know, um, and so, um, so yeah, and so I'm 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 effective in all those arenas. Uh, they come to me, uh, say say if you're um, if you want to increase your speed, um, in um, in your running, okay, um, you know there's certain exercises, um, plyometrics, a lot of plyometrics, a lot of explosive stuff that we do that will get you to run faster. Um, also, you know um, I have a. Uh, lady now that I'm helping get ready for the chip test 
um, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, I've, I've, there's police officers now that are police officers because, um, because of my help, you know, passing the actual test. Um, and so, um, you don't have to be, you know, anyone special to want to get in shape. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm your guy, you know. So you have a client who will come to you and based on what they share with you in terms of their goals and what they want to achieve, you kind of tailor make a yes a program for them. Oh yes, absolutely. And 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 so and you're you you do what do you uh, Nautilus? You do free weights. It's a combination. Uh, it's it's such a combination of 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 a lot of things. Um, I I I I tend to um, not to use stationary equipment, um, although those pieces of equipment do have their place. Like if you're, say you broke a leg and you're in um, rehab and you can't use your lower extremities, you know, effectively. So you sit and you use a piece of equipment. Otherwise, there's a lot of compound movements. I just do body movements. Um, yeah. And so that's, that to me is the most effective way of increasing your metabolism, your flexibility, your agility. Um, and, and so, so anyone that comes to me, they can always improve in those areas. And so, 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 and then, you know, say, say if soccer is your thing, then we, we work on drills that will increase your, um, your ball handling. Um, if football is your thing. So like this young man, he, um, um, I've been training him, uh, going on three years now, four years. Okay. And, um, he came to me, he was 14. Okay. And this guy's six, two size 15 and a half shoe at 14. Right. A football player. Was he a, a high school football player? Um, uh, yes. Ninth grade. Yes. And so, um, so he, he, you know, um, he comes to me every, every time he's on, um, in the winter or, um, in the summer. Okay. He's in college now and, um, and I'll train him to, to get him stronger. He usually, um, I usually in a three month period, I usually knock off about five to 7%, um, of, uh, body fat and add maybe, um, about, about another um, another five percent of muscle on him because what he does he needs he needs muscle yeah. and um, and and yeah we get him faster I, I I get him going on the treadmill and and the bike we do wind sprints and stuff like that and and um and and so that's how I train say you know a college uh, football player. Do you get into diet and nutrition with uh, any of your clients? Uh, yeah, we talk, I'm not a nutritionist. Okay. Want, want to clarify that. But, um, but I eat, you know, three to five meals a day. So I know a lot about nutrition. I know, um, what carbs can do, what fats can do, um, the combination of the, the, the proteins and the fats and the carbohydrates like that. So I, I, I do, um, make suggestions and, um, it's up to them to follow it or not. You know, some do, some don't. You know, but for the most part, the ones that do, they get the results that that um, that I dictate. Well, uh, so far of all all the the uh, activities and the, the life journey that you've had up to this point, mm -hmm. is there one particular? Is there something that's been a source of pride, an achievement that has that's you know made you? proud um let's see um yeah uh, like okay so my philosophy might be a little different than most as far as uh my life approach um i believe that life is not measured by duration or span but donation okay so i use the analogy of of buying yourself a pair a new pair of sneakers okay versus somebody buying somebody a pair of shoes or sneakers that really needs them. And if you reflect back a year from that date, um, you can, you can, it's, 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 it's kind of a struggle to, to extract joy out of buying yourself a pair of sneakers, but to buy somebody else a pair of shoes that needs it, you can still, you can still extract joy from that experience, even though it happened a year ago. 
And so, so, so this giving, you know, and plus my uncle, he, he donated his time to, to these inner city um, children. And this was all just, you know, like, like this is like, he made no money doing this and he did it for quite a few years. Um, and so, so that was my role model. And so I, I try to give back whenever possible. Okay. Um, and, and so, yeah, there, you know, like, um, you know, there has to be a minimum exchange, this and that, bills have to be paid and this and that. But um, to, 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 I relish in the opportunity to, to help someone that, that in a sense can't help themselves, you know, and, um, and also to pull out the potential out of people. You know, just because you're, you're in your 40s or 50s don't mean that the potential um, has already, you know, all your potential has arrived. No, there's still more. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a um, gentleman that I train now, and um, hopefully he'll be in the studio in a few. Um, this, this, this man, he plays basketball at least a few times a week. He trains with me. Um, I trained him to do a, um, a, um, a uh, tough mother the, the, the race where all these obstacles, um, he's done marathons, half marathons before, you know, and, and this man is, is in his almost in say 60 in the sixties, early sixties, late fifties, early sixties. And so he's, his potential is still showing up, you know? And so, um, as long as you have breath in your body, there's always more to extract out of you, you know? And I, 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 um, I like to say that when I die, when my time is ended on this earth, I like to, I want to leave empty, you know, because my passion is to pull out the best in you, you know, like that. And so this is my approach. What's your most important belief, Jonathan? Um, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Okay. And, um, and, and my philosophy is if, um, if you can qualify something as a thing, there had to have been a thought behind the, the creation of a thing. There had to have been a thinker behind the thought. And just so happens that, you know, my creator, it happens to be God. That's my beliefs. And, um, and so um, with that, you know, my faith is very strong. And it's, it's like, um, it's like um, even though it's invisible, it's tangible because it moves me to do things that normally um, I would not believe that I can do, you know, and that's the evidence that's real. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. And, um, and I, so I extract um, my, my belief system and my courage from um, the, the, the life that, that Christ lived. You know, if you if you just take religion out of it and you just read this like, you know, like you're reading a documentary of a man that walked the planet, his life was still amazing. You know, a lot of times religion is it, it, it steals from people because it's basically a bunch of do's and don'ts. And um, he just fulfilled his purpose, just like I'm, I'm trying to fulfill my purpose. And, and so, yeah, yeah. Do I have everything figured out? No. But um, I'm, I'm truly enjoying the journey. Well, what have you uh, along these lines? What, uh, I don't want you to repeat yourself, but what have you learned? What would you say you've learned about, what have you learned about life? What have you learned about Jonathan Hunt? Okay, okay. Through all of these uh, interactions you've had, all these things you've done, done in life. What have you learned? <clears throat> Okay, the more I learn, the more I find out I don't know. And so that's humbling, okay? And so I've, I've learned, first of all, how to be content where, where I'm at. Meanwhile, having that desire or that faith to apprehend where I'm going. Okay, so contentment is, is, is um, almost... A, a rare um, commodity, you know, like people, you know, the contentment allows you to be in the moment, right? And so, um, so I did this, I love this, 
you know, I, I, I'm a people's person. I love human transaction or um, dialogue. And, and um, I met you <laughs> through dialogue at, at Whole Foods, right? And so, um, so I love to be in the moment, to, 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 to see other people's views. Now, um, as you know, um, you know, my views are, are, are adamant, right? And so um, that's what makes life interesting, okay? And so, so now I respect your views. And, um, and, if, and, and sometimes I allow myself to emote with you as far as your views like that. And so you determine the wealth of something by its rarity, okay? The more rare something is, the more priceless it is, right? And so I'm, I'm figuring out why I'm here, okay? And, and the reason, this is in a nutshell, is to maximize your potential, is what can I do for you that's gonna make you arrive to, to at your fullest, at your optimal? And so that, that pleases me, okay? Shouldn't that be the, the overriding goal, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. of a parent, a teacher, a coach, a friend, mm -hmm. to in, try to, to impact or influence another person's life by helping them to develop and, uh, and, and reach their potential and be the, all they can be in, in life. It shouldn't, shouldn't that be everybody's uh, goal in a society? So, so, so now everyone has the potential, okay, to do that, okay? But not everyone experientially is doing that, okay? So now watch. Right. Right. I didn't always have this posture, okay? But through life's challenges, okay, um, I've acquired this posture. And um, if, if you look at your life as, as you're, you become a narrator of it, you, you, um, you, you conclude that um, I had more fun helping that person than doing this, this selfish thing that I wanted to do. Now, now watch, I, 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 if you can't hang out with yourself, then how do you expect others to tolerate you, you know? So I spend a lot of <laughs> me time, you know? And, and so in retroflect and, you know, with my maker, right? I, I do a lot of walking at the reservoir, right? Um, to reflect, but, but it so fills me with joy helping people like you maximize your potential. And, and so guess what? If we can get you to do something that you didn't do before, as far as, you know, in my arena, it's the physical component, um, then that's, that, that's going to bring you joy, and it's going to bring me joy as well, right? And so it's a win-win. Well, Jonathan Hunt, thank you for sharing that. It sounds to me as if you've really, uh, you, you've, you've gained a lot of wisdom through your experiences and that is something that everybody might be well to do in their lives, to reflect on their behavior, reflect on what I'm doing and what I have done, and see what I have learned about life and, and myself. And uh, thank you for sharing your journey with us. You're quite wonderful, welcome, Jeff. wonderful time. And uh, people out there, viewers out there, thanks again for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon with another uh, Journeys with Jeff. Take care.